you all having a really really good week sorry i'm just readjusting myself already um so i'm vlogging a little bit earlier than i thought i was going to um i think like my aim was to vlog every couple of weeks um but i happen to have the time to film a vlog and i have like tons to tell you all about so here i am <laughs> Um, yeah, so I, going on from my last vlog, I have written a list and I've upped the stakes even more from just writing a list. I've got it stuck underneath my camera so I can actually see my list down here. Um, so I'm going to be really, there's going to be such a good flow and I'm going to be really organised about this now. So I hope you enjoy me being organised for once. <laughs> anyway. Um, so I'll start by telling you all about what I'm wearing because I'm wearing a Me Made and this is um, a named Sloan sweatshirt and this is, you probably recognise the fabric, I can't remember if I've shown you guys but it's the Atelier Brunette French Terry and this is the grey um, with the tiny little pink, like almost metallic pink yeah they are metallic pink little tiny dots all over um and this pattern i really love um because unlike the linden which is like the the people's choice the sweatshirt pattern um this has quite a nice narrow neckband um sorry you can't see my face i realized that maybe that's a good thing um but yeah the neckline is um like a bit smaller anyway and um, I realise there's a pucker on here but I don't I, I'm not too bothered about that anyway <laughs> so yeah it's a bit more narrow and the thing I get with sweatshirts is I always like to wear a t-shirt underneath um, for warmth and I hate it when you wear a t-shirt and then you put a jumper on and it's you can see the whole of the t-shirt as well um, so that's why I was drawn to this pattern it has these like cool darts that go like right from down near the waist up to the sort of bust area um yeah so it's a really nice pattern i guess if i made another one i might make it a maybe an inch longer but otherwise it's it's really lovely um yeah and obviously the fabric is just like stunning so yeah that's what i'm wearing i seem to live in t-shirts and jumpers i don't know if that's the mum in me that just has to throw clothes on so everything has to be like really easy just to throw on um and also be practical and warm um but yeah this as well i'm really sorry if there's a stain on it because i've just um i just put otis down for his nap and we did hand washing <laughs> hand washing before lunch and no this was after lunch because he played with the cat flap which is disgusting so I, I got him to wash his hands and I put soap in his hands like a squirty soap um, and he seems to know how to wash his hands so I do hand washing hand washing so he had this big blob of soap um, and he didn't seem interested in doing hand washing hand washing he apparently wanted to grab my boob so I had a smear of soap down and soap and water all down my side but anyway, I digress. So I have tons to tell you all about. I've been spending it up and I've got some bits and pieces to show you. I've bought four new patterns and two pieces of fabric. So all of the patterns and one of the pieces of fabric are from Backstitch. So I'll show you all of those first. I feel really guilty for spending so much money, but um, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't, but anyway, I've treated myself. There we go. So, here we go. Um, I've bought a Tilly and the Buttons Nest skirt. Ooh. And I'm really, really interested in making the short version. So, let me just see if that will focus there yeah so um this was on my make nine if you saw my last vlog and i'm gonna i think i'm gonna make this out of a wool that i've got in my stash which i might as well just show you now anyway bear with me okay this is a wool 
that I'm going to try not to unfold. <laughs> I feel like, do you remember when that blue and black and or golden cream saga went on on the news when people could see it differently? Um, this is definitely blue and black in case it comes across any differently on the screen. But it's like, um, some people call this puppy's tooth, right? But it's like miniature hound's tooth. And I got this... It was a remnant from uh, the Cambridge Fabric Company um, and yeah there's enough there to make like a shorter skirt so I thought that would look lovely and really work appropriate so that's what I'm thinking. I wasn't going to actually go into all of that but anyway. So yeah Tilly and the Buttons was my first pattern purchase and I also got the True Bias Landers also on my Make 9. Um, yeah, so I've, I'm probably going to try making some of those out of some navy jumbo cord that I've already got. And I might as well show you while I'm here. Bear with me a second. I just realised I keep saying bear with me a second, but I can just edit that out, can't I? <laughs> Anyway, this is the navy jumbo cord that I've got. This um, is gorgeous. Sorry about the bits on there. Um, I got this from Ray Stitch, and um, maybe you'll see the colour better if I just stand here. Yeah, it's really deep navy blue. Yeah, so I thought I might make some landers out of that. I think that would work, um, but it's gorgeous quality, this fabric had this for a little while um, when I went on a little binge on the Ray Stitch website. So yeah, Landers from Make 9 um, and I think actually that's why I splurged so much because I thought well I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and make these things this year anyway so I've got to buy the patterns so let's do this, let's get this show on the road. So yeah, Landers and a third pattern, I am in love with this and again from my Make 9. Um, is the Deer and Doe Magnolia. Um, so I'm really keen on the um, this maxi dress version and don't think I've got any fabric. No, I haven't got fabric in mind for that yet, but that's, um, I think I need an occasion to wear that as well. And once I've, I don't know, no, maybe I don't need an occasion to wear that. I just could make it anyway. I'm going to be on the lookout for some fabric for that anyway, so, um, but that will happen later in the year. I think that's probably more of a summer time, when the weather's a bit warmer sort of make anyway, so, but I'm so, I've been so excited about making that for such a long time. Anyway, so, that was number three. The number four is not from my Make 9, but I have been eyeing this up for a really, really, really long time and it was in the shop and I looked at it, walked away, looked at it, walked away and then I got that feeling of, you know when you think you're going to leave a shop and then you're going to think about that thing that you didn't buy for weeks. So anyway, I just added it to the pile in for a penny and for a pound and all that. So this is the Friday Pattern Company Luc Lucida dress. And there's the line drawing there. I'm hoping that's focusing okay. Um, yeah, it's just a gorgeous jersey dress. And um, I really think that sort of style suits me um, with the light fitted bodice and sort of fluttering skirt. Uh, so that got me to thinking about um, making it because I got really excited you know when you get really excited and you're like I'm making it right now um so I went online for like ages because I was ill another story for another time maybe maybe later in this vlog um and I found the most gorgeous fabric and I'll show you now this is one that I bought this isn't from backstitch I have got another fabric that is but this is for the this particular dress and this is a modal jersey, um, no, it was described as a peach skin modal jersey uh, from Sister Mantaka. And I honestly swear to you, 
this might just be the nicest fabric I've ever touched. Um, so it's like this forest green and I've never really come across this before. So it's it's got this sort of matte finish to it, like a, the peach skin effect, but it is a jersey and it comes in an array of different like deep autumnally type rich colours. So I think there was like a navy blue and a maroon um, and they're not cheap but I tell you what, you get what you pay for. This is really delicious quality. <laughs> I don't know why I use that word to describe it, but it is gorgeous and I literally cannot wait to make that dress. Um, I think that dress will be appropriate for dressing up for like going out if I were to go out <laughs> um, to see the girls or something or a date night um, or I could dress it down um, with like a cardi or something and tights and some ankle boots for work um, so yeah I just needed to rave about this fabric because it is just so lovely and strokeable and gorgeous and delicious and I love it so yeah big shout out to Sister Mantaka for that fabric um, I'll see how I get on with sewing it because I think I'm going to sew it quite soon I've just cut out the paper pattern I didn't trace it because I got too excited um, but yeah yeah so hopefully I'll be making that really soon I don't think it, it seems like a pretty quick make so who knows next vlog maybe maybe not we'll see um, so yeah that's the last pattern and one of my fabrics from my my haul okay and the last fabric was from Backstitch and uh, this is just so gorgeous. On the face of it, it looks like a normal sort of cotton chambray type fabric, but I really need to show you the close up. It's a bit creased up because I've just pre washed it because I got really excited and chucked it in the wash straight away. Um, so, yeah, it's just this like bluey colour, okay? So it looks like denim, but when you get close, I really hope you can see this but there's tiny, 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 gorgeous little flecks of neon type uh, yellow and pink, like scattered throughout. I really hope you can see that okay, because IRL, it's stunning. So I'm quite excited about this because I feel like I haven't sewn with like a stable fabric, like a stable woven fabric in ages. So I'm thinking maybe like a shirt dress or something. Yeah, I seem to pick all the slippy and slippy fabrics and stretchy fabrics lately, but um, yeah, so I'm quite excited to sew with that. So there are all the bits that I've been buying and spending up on, um, which are all really exciting. And I also wanted to tell you about a couple of things that I've been up to. Um, when I last filmed my last vlog, I was very very literally on the way out the door to go to um, Backstitch which is a fabric and haberdashery shop um, near to where I live near Cambridge and they hold um, like a monthly dressmakers social so I was just heading out the door to go to that and um, that was really cool uh, I think they can fit I think there's like eight of us there and you just take along your own projects and you can hire a machine or take your own and yeah it was just really nice and I saw um, Eleanor from Randomly Happy and we had an amazing catch up and it was so lovely to see her so we were able to chat sewing together I knew I wouldn't get much done I knew I'd just talk and talk and talk so um, I took along my um, Lisa Comfort slash sew over it a cocoon coat to just go and cut out and um, that's about all I did I didn't do any actual stitching sewing I just did like cutting out and chatting um, which was really nice actually and um, I've got all the actually I'll, I'll show you because I really wanted to show you what I've chosen the lining of the coat because I'm pretty chuffed with this so 
I've got it all really organised and like folded up ready. But if I just give you like a little sneak peek of the fabric. So this is part of the welt pocket. So you can see the fabric there. It's this gorgeous peach. I think when I bought it, it was described as a twill coating fabric, which I can kind of see. It has those diagonal lines across it. Um, so I've decided to use my Atelier Brunette fabric to line it and I feel like it's quite an inspired choice. So it's the bottle green, um, this is a viscose so I'm really hoping this works as a lining fabric. But yeah that's the outer shell and that will be the lining. I thought that was inspired. That would look so nice. I'm even loving it more seeing it on the little screen on my camera right now. Um, yeah, so we'll see how that goes. That will be my first proper coat. That's on my Make 9 as well. I'll keep talking about the Make 9. So yeah, that's what I cut out and I've been cutting out at home. I've still got to cut out the interfacing. Um, yeah, so I'm on a bit of a, a cutting out binge at the minute. I, for the record, I hate cutting out, but I like to just get it all over and done with in a big splurge. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been up to this last week. So yeah, that's what I've been up to this week. Um, and uh, from like a personal note, I've been ill as well. I feel like I'm always on here telling you someone's been ill. Um, Oh, I think it's just the time of year and the fact that I've got a toddler at nursery. So I got home on Tuesday, I noticed I had fever, took him to the doctors, ear infection, antibiotics. Um, and then the next day Harvey was at the doctors because he'd been poorly for a few days and he was getting a fever and feeling really awful. He had tonsillitis, antibiotics and... For s by some miracle, I haven't caught that. Touch wood, I haven't caught that. Um, and then Friday afternoon, Harvey started feeling sick um, and he was like throwing up. Sorry if this is too much information. Um, so he was really poorly, as well as having all the tonsillitis and stuff. But we put it down to he his body sort of reacting to the antibiotics a bit until I woke up Friday night at like two in the morning, I was so ill. Um, so I think that's been the like winter vomiting virus. So that was pretty grim. No, I really, yeah, I'm not trying not to go into too much information, but if anyone's had that, I, the word I would use to describe this virus is violent. <laughs> so it's been pretty short lived though. Um, so, yeah, I'm feeling a lot brighter now um, and I've been able to eat some actual food today. I've had some really trashy like spaghetti and sausages on toast and stuff like that just to make myself feel a bit better and happier. So yeah, I'm on the mend anyway. Um, and because I was ill over the weekend, it's meant that I um, couldn't make it to Bristol to um, like So Amazing's so Sarah from Like So Amazing's uh, shop opening. So I'm sure you all follow her anyway, but um, I'll try and link her channel or website in. She has this amazing online shop. So she set up the shop just like last year online and she's doing so well and she's opened her own bricks and mortar shop in Bristol. And I really wanted to go and support her um, yeah, so obviously I couldn't and um, I'm, what I'm going to do is arrange a date to go another time. So I thought maybe I could go for like a sewing day and a few of us could go and hang out there and um, do a little bit of sewing together so I can check out her shop. And um, yeah, so if you don't already follow Sarah, then head on over to her website and take a look at her gorgeous fabrics. And before I go, I just forgot, I've just seen on the floor, I haven't shown you this. Um, I don't know if you guys all use a service for printing PDF um, patterns or if you do it yourself at home, but I really, really, really recommend this company, Patternzy. Um, I th think they ship everywhere around the world as well. Um, 
so they're really cool I love their branding as well uh, but they um, they're really reasonably priced and they will even take the patterns that you send to them and they will they will adjust everything so that it uses as, as little paper as possible um, which I think is a great thing and um, so it's really cost effective as well so yeah that so everything comes like this so I've had my I am Apollon um, for men and the women's versions uh, printed out so I can get going on that project as well which is really cool so sorry totally forgot to tell you about that so that is everything from me I hope you've enjoyed watching if you I always mean to say this but forget but if you don't subscribe then feel free to subscribe to my channel and um, that'd be lovely uh, so just click the subscribe button and that would be fab and um, I'll see you all again on a vlog really really soon thank you so much for watching everyone take care bye